Well, hey folks, I'm sitting here in the Lazy Boy watching YouTube. You know, I just watched a video talking about some of the copies of this knife being that this is the most copied knife in the world. You know, through all the videos that I watched, looking at Uncle Henry's, Schrade's, K-Bar, I mean, everybody tried to copy this knife. I mean, they really worked hard to carve out their own niche. This is a buck 110. This is the new pro or whatever they call it. it. Says 110. I mean, the sheath has been perfected over the years. On many of the other Uncle Henry Schrades, all the other copycats. You know, even the even the flap here has less obtrusiveness. Many times, bigger isn't better when it comes to a leather sheath. I mean, Buck has it down pat like no tomorrow. You know, this pointed down like this, instead of a big square type flap. I mean, they really did it up. So let's take a look at this knife. And don't mind me sitting here in my lazy boy. You're looking at my crossed legs, of course. It's better than some people where they do their videos. Now this is it. Nickel silver bolsters. I put on a black thumb stud. This, when it comes to the Buck 110, is just the pinnacle of, like they reach their pinnacle here, okay? I mean, it's just grippy. You got the G10, which, you know, if you like it or hate it, it's, it's a durable material. I like personally silver and black versus the, the brass. Now, of course, it's not as traditional. This is taking the tradition and just stepping it up a notch, which I don't mind whatsoever. So let's open her up. I mean, the snap, the weight, this is a weighty knife, but in all reality, you know, compared to say a big giant, you know, cold steel, this knife is not that big in my mind, not compared to some other knives that I've owned. I mean, this is nothing compared to the size of a cold steel Formax, a cold steel Scout, um, and I believe they even have a new one sort of out. But when it comes to beauty, refinement, smooth edges. Now, one thing I have noticed while I'm sitting here looking at it is on this side, this rivet right here. On this side sits a little prouder and you may be able to see it than on this side. But, you know, people nitpick stuff like that. And I mean, you can kind of feel, I mean, that, that sits out kind of significantly compared to sitting this side. But all I know is that is the main pin in this knife. And it doesn't bother me whatsoever. Blade, this is the S30V with the Boss heat treatment. And I mean, this is a new knife. This is relatively new for Buck. And they, they hit it out of the park when it comes to this knife. Now, clip points. I've never been a huge clip point guy. That, that point on there does have its merits, that's for sure, versus like a drop point. That thing is so pointy where you're just not going to get that kind of piercing abilities on a drop point. 
So I wanted to go over this one more time. I mean, this knife is so new. It's very stiff. Snaps closed. No problem. I mean, but it's stiff. And you know what? I like that. I, there's no wobble, no nothing on this knife. And the thing about it is, in you know, compared to a bunch of... This is dangerous, I know, I guess. Pointing it against my leg. But compared to many of the customs, I look... I'm addicted to looking at the Buck 110, 112 customs and what people have done with this knife. The engraving of the bolsters, the material that they put in here. The only other knife that I would absolutely die for would be this exact same knife with true Elkhorn, Staghorn, whatever you call it. Big, fat, chunky bone, or really antler as the scales here, as the grips. But the G10 is mighty nice. This black and silver just stands out. What is it about that? It's like a black car like an old hot rod that's just lacquer black with lots and lots of chrome. Young people today don't understand and don't care even, I bet. You take some 16, 24, 20, 24 year old, they don't get it that back in the day, a lacquer black shiny shave in it paint job with chrome a real American chrome steel all over the car the bumpers the the, the hood emblem the backside the 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 windshield wipers the mirrors around the headlights, the tail lights, the grill used to be metal, chrome. But there's something about black and chrome in my mind. That to me is so gorgeous. So even though I pine for a big staghorn thick, I see some of them where the sides are staghorn and they're real thick. I would love to have this exact same knife. I might have to someday try to get a custom with the polished S30V blade that is just so wicked sharp. I mean, this thing, I have no problem with the you know, the 420C, I have absolutely no problem with it. I am not by any means a steel nerd or snob or whatever they call themselves. And I don't even like doing videos like this many times where I'm being a handy boy here. All you're seeing is hand and a knife. But, and see the silver, the silver and the staghorn the whitish staghorn. I see a lot of them where they put the staghorn on the brass and the staghorn will be real white, real whitish or the bone or, you know, antler, whatever it is. And they put it on the brass and it just doesn't pop in my mind. It's got to pop. I'm going to be a fanboy here. I've got other bucks. And when it really boils down to it, this one, G10 Silver Bolsters, Polished Clip Point S30V Blade, Black Thumb Stud, 
this really does it for me. And if you're interested in it, this is a very affordable, this isn't like some custom that's $250. You can find these free shipping to your door, $90, $99. And you have something that is as good as the old classic with the rosewood or the ebony wood and the 420C steel and the brass bolsters. I mean, this is as good. This can be an heirloom like no tomorrow. I don't have any kids or anything to pass my knives on to, but if I did, I've got two of these. I would definitely be passing it on. I just wanted to do a quick video sitting here in the Lazy Boy, watching YouTube on Memorial Day, about 6 p.m., and just pass on my emotional connection to this knife. I've had all kinds of knives. I've had, I mean, just, just ridiculous amounts that I've bought, I've carried, I've sold. Like I mentioned, the Cold Steel Formax. I had the Recon. I've gone, I've had a lot of Cold Steels. As a matter of fact, I got the Cold Steel Ranch Boss. It's a $30 knife. It is cheap. It is something I will take and I will put on my belt in a sheath when I'm out on my boat. A lot of these sheaths don't have the rivet right there. Many of them save money by doing the slits and the belt goes through. Some people don't like these because it stands off and it stands a little high on your belt. It's all personal preference. I find this better myself. I like this loop. It's easier for me to get a big wide two inch nylon tactical 511 belt that I wear every day uh, through then trying to slip it through when they do those cuts. And this is an added piece of leather. This one probably, I this was probably one of the, the sheaths, I think it was. This is a made in Mexico sheath that comes with this knife. Just to keep the cost down. I have no problems with that. This thing is extreme quality. One thing I'd like to try, they had the distressed leather, which is like softer than this, but this will become distressed on its own. One thing that I would rather see on this particular knife is I'd rather see a silver buck snap but that's okay you know these a lot of these on these youtube videos when people are doing kind of a review they are really nitpicking the living hell out of stuff i'm not gonna do that see a lot of this is still production they're not custom okay this isn't built by a guy in his shop you know in west virginia or anything I've heard people talk about the pins here and how they 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 stick out too far on knives. But I mean the fit and finish of this and that sticking out a bit versus over here tells me that's my main pin. And that's what it is. It is the main pin. That's the pin that your back lock is riding on. Now see this does not drop down. I've watched these videos where if that knife, when you push the release, does not drop down, these guys go into a frenzy. These talking hands videos, that that's all they ever do. It really pisses me off. And they call themselves reviewers. A review is taking this thing out and gutting a pig, gutting a deer, cutting lots of stuff just not cardboard 
whittling, you know. So I don't call this a review. I refer to all this type of stuff as show and tell. So that's my show and tell. I love that sound. Listen to that. I mean, that snaps closed. And that snaps open. That is the beauty of a lockback knife. I got a brand new buck that I will maybe do another show and tell of. It is wonderful. Instead of a full back lock like this, it's kind of right here. It's in my card of uh, handles. But still, it's a beautiful knife made out of stainless and um, it's got a different steel. It's a wider blade. But when it comes to the classic, Buck, I believe you knocked it slap out of the damn park with this modern version of a classic. So thanks for watching. This is Captain Dave Sport Fishing YouTube channel. And uh, very affordable, very heirloomish, and I don't believe you can go wrong with this right here. Like I said, anywhere 90 to 100 bucks, and it is just breathtakingly wonderful. I might try to pick the 112. I might get the 112 in this, have a smaller version too. So there you go. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next sitting here looking at my leg video in the Lazy Boy. Don't forget, give it a thumbs up. And I got videos on top of videos on top of videos from everything from Suzuki outboard maintenance to light tackle fishing in Florida and everything in between. So I know nobody looks at channels, but don't forget, you can go right up and click on Captain Dave Sport Fishing under this video and go straight to my channel where I've got everything in playlists. I've even got a playlist of just stories. I believe I have this on my Amazon Tools of the Trade page where I recommend and have reviewed or showed and tell or use everyday products. I believe I have this on there and if I don't I'm going to put it on there because this is one awesome knife.